everyone. This is Sherry Diwali with Readout News. We are live from Spokane Valley, Washington. We're in the office of Washington State Representative Matt Shea, who is here to give us a special report on some very breaking news that will affect every American in this country. Sherry, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, and I appreciate everything you guys are doing with Readout News. You've been doing a wonderful job covering the trial down in uh, Nevada. I would like to first start uh, some of the things I'm going to be talking about today are extremely serious, and uh, I don't want to be overly dramatic, but uh, I think you'll see why here in a second I'm about to say what I'm about to say. Um, I have never had in my entire life, ever, any inclination to commit suicide. I have never in my entire life uh, taken inappropriate pictures and stored them on my computer. In fact, I've had my computer forensically searched for such images. And uh, generally speaking, I love my wife dearly, and uh, we have a wonderful and happy marriage. So with that, everybody's like, whoa, what do you have to say? Well, I, I want to start. Uh, with a couple of things. First, uh, there's a very important principle that I would like to start out with of kind of why what I'm about to say is so important to the American people, and it's this. Um, the people of this state, and this comes from Washington State's Public Records Act, the people of this state do not yield their sovereignty to the agencies that serve them. The people in delegating authority do not give their public servants the right to decide what is good for the people to know and what is not good them to know. People insist on remaining informed so that they may maintain control over the instruments that they have created. And that ultimately is the crux of what I am about to talk about today since it does involve the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, specifically here in Washington State, the Bureau of Land Management uh, has approximately 435,000 acres under its management. Also, it has many interactions with some of our state agencies and also, obviously, our citizens here in Washington State. One of the very important things to me is that when you are a servant of the government, as we have seen, a servant of the people, as we have seen in recent news stories, you are held to a higher standard because you are a servant of the people, not a servant of the government. That's an important point for what I'm about to talk about. The interesting thing that I have seen over the years is that there has been a flipping of that where uh, a lot of people that are in the governing authorities have felt like they don't serve the people, the people serve them, and it's just not that way. And so today I would like to, to break some information that I have obtained. Uh, it is a correspondence between Special Agent Larry C. Wooten to Andrew D. Goldsmith who's the Associate Deputy Attorney General of the United States of America. And recently we've heard and you've reported on rumors that there has been a move to dismiss the case against the Bundys down in Nevada. And what I am about to tell you is probably one of the reasons why. And it has to do with the unethical potentially illegal behavior uh, that was highlighted by Special Agent Wooten as a whistleblower in an email that, uh, or, or it looks like an email, uh, that we have confirmed the veracity of. And I want to just give you a little bit of a taste reading from this email of what Special Agent Wooten brought up as problems be found in the Bureau of Land Management, specifically in regards to the investigation of the Bundy family. Quote, I routinely observed in the investigation revealed a widespread pattern of bad judgment, lack of discipline, incredible bias, unprofessional and misconduct, unprofessionalism and misconduct, as well as likely policy, ethical, and legal violations among senior and supervisory staff at the BLM's Office of Law Enforcement and Security. When I reported these issues, my supervisors seemed generally unsurprised and uninterested and was dismissive and seemed unconcerned. Now, I want to set the stage a little bit here. Apparently, Special Agent Wooten was the case agent or the lead investigator for this case. Here's another quote from him. The longer the investigation went on, the more extremely unprofessional, familiar, racy, vulgar, and bias 
filled actions, open comments, and inappropriate electronic communications I was made aware of or I personally witnessed, end quote. He then continues, quote, the ridiculousness of the conduct, unprofessional, amateurish, carnival atmosphere, openly made statements and electronic communications tended to mitigate the defendant's culpability and cast a shadow of doubt of inexcusable bias, unprofessionalism, and embarrassment on our agency, end quote. This is where it gets very uh, incredible because Special Agent Wooten brings up some very serious uh, allegations against his own agency, and I want to kind of highlight what those are, and then I would like to go through what specifically is written uh, in this correspondence. First, Special Agent Wooten says that there was the treatment of the Bundys in a, a manner that suggested they wanted to see a couple members of the Bundy family either dead or harmed. And I want to be very specific about what he said about that in here. The second thing that's brought up is that there was an apparent withholding of exculpatory evidence that Mr. Wooten had brought to the attention of his supervisors. Uh, next was that there was allegations of sexual misconduct inside the BLM's law enforcement uh, arm and that also there were indeed at Bundy Ranch snipers that had been deployed. Now, it's interesting because I personally have been witnessing the news reports that have been out there, some of the things you've been breaking, that snipers were in fact maybe not there and that that was the government's position in, in uh, a previous hearing. Uh, this document very clearly is the smoking gun, uh, not only in this case, but I believe an indictment of BLM itself and maybe even potentially the prosecutors that are involved in this case. And I want to read again some of the things that are in here because some of it is so outrageous that I will be sending a letter very specifically to Congress. We'll be sending a letter to Secretary Zinke and the Trump administration so that they can take the appropriate action and uh, prosecute the bad actors for some of the behavior that has occurred inside the BLM. I also want to be very specific that the Trump administration uh, is probably going to be blindsided by this as I was blindsided by uh, this information coming to me. And I believe that they have been doing the right thing when they have been given the facts. And I, I have every confidence the Trump administration is going to do the right thing in this case to bring those to justice that have either violated the letter of the law or the spirit of the law or policies internal to BLM. So let me go down a couple of these things that are in this correspondence, again from Special Agent Wooten. Quote, the misconduct caused considerable disruption in the workplace, was discriminatory, harassing, and showed clear prejudice against the defendants, their supporters, and Mormons. Oftentimes, the misconduct centered on being sexually inappropriate, profanity, appearance, slash body shaming, and likely violated privacy and civil rights. Next, he says, extreme bias and degrading flyers, uh, extreme, sorry, extremely biased and degrading flyers were also openly displayed and passed around the office. A booking photo of Clive and Bundy was and is inappropriately openly, prominently, and proudly displayed in the office of a potential trial witness and my supervisor, and an altered uh, degrading suspect photos were put in the office presentation by his supervisor, end quote. The next quote is, quote, my supervisor even instigated the unprofessional monitoring of jail calls between defendants and their wives without prosecutor or FBI consent for the apparent purpose of making fun of the post-arrest telephone calls between Idaho defendants slash FBI targets, end quote. That is, a, that is an extraordinary statement, that they are admitting what seems to be a very clear violation of, if not policy, uh, the spirit or letter of the law. Uh, I also find it very interesting as well that they were putting things up in the office when some of those members of that office had to testify. Um, I think there are some very clear rules uh, that uh, say you should not do that um, for many different reasons. I will move next to some more comments that he had and then get into something that is probably the most shocking part of this entire uh, correspondence. Quote, this carnival, inappropriate, and childish behavior didn't stop with the directed bias and degradation of subjects of investigation. 
BLM law enforcement supervisors also openly talked about and gossiped about private employee personnel matters, such as medical conditions, work performance, marriage issues, religion, punishments, internal investigations, and derogatory opinions of high-level BLM supervisors. He also says, quote, there was a religious test of sorts, and he was personally asked, quote, you're not a Mormon, are you? And he was told, quote, I bet you think I'm going to hell, end quote. He continues, quote, that the investigation also indicated that on multiple occasions, former BLM special agent in charge, Love, specifically and purposely ignored U.S. Attorney's Office and BLM's civilian management direction and intent, as well as Nevada State official recommendations in order to command the most intrusive, oppressive, large-scale and militaristic trespass cattle impound possible, end quote. I want to comment on that for a second. If we, if government exists to protect the rights of life, liberty, and property, and you have now a special agent in charge questioning the handling of this situation, that it was intentionally made intrusive, oppressive, large-scale, and militaristic, we have a problem in America today. And those people that did this need to be held accountable for it. And I have, again, every confidence the Trump administration will do so. It's also interesting to note that, that uh, Special Agent Wooten said that he had contacted Attorney Stephen Myrie and Assistant United States Attorney Nadia Ahmed, as well as the Federal Bureau of Investigation Special Agent Joel Willis by telephone on these issues. And as you read through the document, which we will post online here as soon as this segment is done, very specifically, he, he seems to imply that nothing was ever done by any of those folks. And I, I, that, that, at the very least, needs to be investigated further, if that is indeed the correct implication. But the most shocking part of this entire thing, I believe, is that the BLM law enforcement arm and one of his supervisors, quote, emailed out photographs of an arrest tracking wall in which Eric Parker and Cliven Bundy had X's through their face and body, and then he puts in quotation, or in uh, parentheses, indicating prejudice and bias, in parentheses. Well, I think that's a little bit more than prejudice and bias, in my opinion, because later in this document, he says, quote, time after time, I was told a former BLM special agent in charge loves misconduct. I was told by BLM law enforcement supervisors that he had a kill book. Well, every American needs to understand what I just said. That you have a special agent in charge that had a kill book. Well, was that turned over to the defense? How was that due process? I mean, there's a lot of questions this statement by Special Agent Wooten raises, but he continues, quote, as a trophy and in essence bragged about getting three individuals in Utah to commit suicide which is why I gave the statement I did at the beginning of, of this segment, because that is a, that's probably one of the most startling statements I have ever read in any investigation I've ever been a part of in the last 15 years. Um, that is beyond startling. But he goes on and he cites the specific operations uh, that were bragged about. Apparently, Operation Cerberus, which I don't even know what that is, but we'll find out, and I know you've reported on it, I think. Also, uh, the Failure Rock and Burning Man special event where, quote, he, he was unlawfully uh, removing evidence, bragging about the number of OIG and internal investigations on him and indicating that he was untouchable, end quote. Those are some of the most shocking statements, again, that I have heard um, in a long time. And people may try to discredit Special Agent Wooten later, but internal to this document, he also says that he was removed from the case on February 18, 2017 by his super, supervisor despite his recently documented and awarded hard work and excellence and often praised performance within Bureau of Land Management. He says, quote, I am convinced that I was removed to prevent the ethical and proper further disclosure of the severe misconduct, failure to correct and report, and cover-ups by the BLM OLES supervision. Time after time, this is where he starts in about the kill book. But he goes on and says, I became convinced that my supervisor failed to properly disclose substantive and exculpatory case and witness uh, 
uh, bias-related issues to the United States Attorney General's office, which they have a duty to disclose exculpatory evidence. And since we don't know what's happening in these sealed hearings, I suspect this is what is giving rise to all the rumors that, that uh, this case is going to be dismissed. If, if this type of exculpatory evidence was withheld, I mean, my goodness. But it gets even more interesting when it talks about uh, in this document that Dave Bundy's iPad likely contained remarks from BLM law enforcement officers that is potentially evidence of civil rights violations and use of excessive force. Mr. Myrie, this is again talking about the attorney, the prosecutor, and my supervisor not only apparently failed to initiate the proper follow-on actions, Mr. Myrie apparently failed to notify defense counsel and also decided not to return the iPad back to Dave, and, uh, Dave Bundy, even though the iPad wasn't going to be searched pursuant to a search warrant or used as evidence in trial. Is this, is this the same uh, Stephen Myrie that is currently the acting U.S. attorney for the state and district of Nevada? Yes, I believe so. It is. And then we get to the end of this document, and I, I will end with this. Now, there was this, this push by the government to make it seem like there were no snipers down there in Nevada. Now, when I went down there, it was very clear that there had been snipers there. People had pictures of them. There was a lot of talk about them. So I was kind of shocked when the government took the position that, that there were somehow not snipers down there. But Special Agent Wooten addresses that, quote, at least one school-trained federal sniper equipped with a scope magnified optic bolt-action precision rifle and another federal officer equipped with a scoped magnified optic large frame caliber, this 308 we're in overwatch positions. Additionally, the investigation also indicated the possibility that the FBI and the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department had law enforcement snipers designated mark marksmen on hand for possible deployment. I want to talk about a few principles here that, that I have believed in and I know many Americans believe in, and, and that is that a sniper rifle is not due process. You know, going down there and putting sniper rifles in our country and for those of us that have served in the United States military overseas, that is a, a startling statement that we had sniper rifles pointed at American citizens without any due process whatsoever. It's also startling that some of these things, and I don't know what has been talked about in these sealed uh, hearings, but it appears that some of these things and more of these things have not been disclosed to the American people. And going back to what I originally stated with the Public Records Act intent here in Washington State, these things not only... Uh, need to be disclosed to the American people. I believe we have a duty to disclose them to the American people because this right here is the smoking gun that what so many people believed had actually gone on behind the scenes in Nevada actually did go on behind the scenes, at least according to Special Agent Wooten. And because of that, again, I am going to be taking action on this. We have, again, 435,000 BLM acres in Washington State and in our oversight capacity in the legislature, we have to, if there is any agency, any level of government, we have taken an oath to defend the Constitution of both the United States and the Constitution of the state of Washington. And this impacts all Americans that this behavior in a federal agency was potentially tolerated, was potentially covered up, was potentially trying to be hidden from the American people. And this, at the very least, warrants an investigation. I believe, you know, Special Agent Wooten had uh, done this and come forward as the whistleblower because he believes in America. And if his statements in here uh, are accurate and correct, then there needs to be people fired from the BLM and prosecuted from the BLM. And also, potentially, if the exculpatory evidence was withheld, potentially from the prosecutor's office, but that's for somebody else to evaluate, not me. My job is to bring this to the public and to make sure that we follow up on this with all the power that we have to ensure an accurate investigation is done at the congressional level and also by Secretary Zinke and the Department of Interior. Has Secretary Zinke been informed of any of this? Do you know? I do not know if he has been informed of any of this. I, again, suspect that he's probably going to be blindsided by this as I was because it's very clear as you read this document um, that Special Agent Wooten is saying that there, were, there was information being withheld 
or intentionally kept compartmentalized. So I would suspect that would mean from superiors, but I don't know. Again, that, that would be total specul speculation. But I, I suspect that uh, he is going to watch this video, and I know that he uh, has a heart for doing the right thing. So uh, again, the Trump administration, I have every faith and trust that they will do the right thing to bring those to justice that need to be brought to justice and to rectify this horrific situation. You said you're going to share this document. That's a, quite a large document. It's like 18 pages, if I remember right. That you didn't, didn't you say 18? It, it is. Yeah, it's 17 or 18. Yeah. So we'll be sharing it online uh, on my Facebook page, and I'd be more than happy to make sure it gets shared over to uh, Readout News. Uh, Absolutely. But uh, this this is going to, I think, uh, change the way that many Americans uh, view some of the things. Uh, that we have maybe trusted for a very long time, like myself, and uh, uh, there's, you know, there's always good and bad actors in any organization, and uh, we need to root out the bad actors, and that's what I aim to do by sending letters and making sure that Congress follows through uh, on this and taking a look into this this serious, serious matter. Well, I certainly hope that representatives in all the Western states follow your lead and get to the bottom of this because it certainly affects everybody. Well, you certainly have some great representatives in Idaho, uh, Congressman Raul Labrador, uh, Representative Dorothy Moon, been doing a great job over there, and I'm going to make sure they get a hold of this as well. Thank you very much, Matt. Appreciate your diligence on this. Would you like to add any final words? I think, you know, Thomas Jefferson hit the nail on the head that, that we have to be eternally vigilant if we want to remain free, and I think that holding government agents accountable that uh, have strayed off the course is part of that eternal vigilance. Will you let us know if you get reactions from um, Secretary Zinke or even the Trump administration? We would dearly love to follow that one with you. Absolutely, and uh, I, I would love to follow up with you again as, as Readout News has been doing a great job covering this entire thing, and I want to thank you uh, as well for all your diligence down there to bring a lot of the things that uh, were not public to the public spotlight. We have uh, just shared with you Representative Matt Shea and the smoking gun for the BLM. Stay tuned. You will be able to read the document yourself as soon as it is uploaded. Thank you all.